Okay, so so uh, we classified polynomials. We gave them names so we know like what a quadratic trinomial is, or you know a fifth degree monomial. That stuff we know. You have to know by the quiz on Friday. Uh, we know how to add polynomials. That's when they give us each polynomial in a parentheses, like the first one that we're going to do. They give you like each polynomial in a parentheses and they put a plus in the middle. We talked about how to do that. So today we're going to subtract. And if you understood addition, then subtraction should be a breeze because guess what? They're the same thing. Structurally, they are the same thing. When you execute it, there's a couple subtle differences. But if I look at it step by step, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing. It's still going to be two steps and the two steps are the same. Who can remember what the first step was for addition? When we had something that looked like this last week, what did we have to do first? No. Good, yeah, we did. We had to distribute because we had to get rid of the parentheses. Very good. But the thing is, what were you distributing? Just ones. So, yes, yeah, so okay, okay, you're like, oh, but that's just a waste of step. I just want to go ahead and combine like terms. Why can't I do that? Well, yeah, because, yeah, we had positive ones on the outside, and anything times one is itself. But today, when we go to subtraction, and by the way, this is a, a typo on this first one. So just following along on your paper, this should be a B. Yeah, that's good. On the first parentheses, I still have a one on the outside, but now in the middle, when I have subtraction, what's outside the second parentheses? Not a one, a negative one. If anything times one is itself, what's any number times negative one? Eleven? Any number times negative one is eleven? No. It's not always going to be negative. Say it better. Better way of saying it. If you multiply by a negative one, but if a negative becomes a positive and a positive becomes a negative, what's a, what's a better way of saying it? Angel, no idea? Okay, give me a number, Angel. One? That's a boring number, man. Give me a better number. You have no, no, no creativity. Kayla, give me a number. Huh? 17. Sounds good. That's a good number. Ready? Let's play a little game with Kayla. Kayla, what? We're talking about what happens when you multiply by negative one. So what is 17 times negative one? Okay, good. Negative 17. So now we're at negative 17. What is negative 17 times negative one? 17. So now let's go. What's 17 times negative 1? Negative 17. But now what's negative 17 times negative 1? Positive 17. So geez, every single time I multiplied by negative 1, what ended up happening? There we go. Thank you. So, long story short, um, when you subtract as long as the parentheses does not have a negative in front, yeah, you could just write everything in there the same. But if you do have a parentheses, in, uh, sorry, a negative in front of your parentheses, then every sign has to change after that. And inside that parentheses, every sign has to change. So negative 6 b to the 4, so it has to become positive 6 b to the 4. Negative uh, or positive b to the third would have to become negative b to the third. All the signs would have to change. And that's it. That's the only difference. If I were to get like a shade and cover up the beginning part of the problem, I would have no way of knowing whether this came from adding or subtracting. Because now the only thing left to do is just combine. There's no more parentheses. 
So let's go ahead and combine. We took advantage when we combined and we went from biggest exponent to least. That had a name. What do you call it when you arrange a polynomial from biggest exponent to least? You're the man, Adrian. The standard form. So the biggest exponent here is a 4. So if I put those together, it's going to be something b to the 4. What is a plus 6? Good job, Adrian. Here's a very common mistake. Even the kids that know what they're doing, because they, it's, it's a careless mistake. You guys see these b to the third, and they have negative b to the third minus b to the third. Yeah, bam, cancel out. Man, if one was positive and one was negative, yeah, they would cancel out. But since they're both negative, you have to add them together and keep the sign. I know it's going to be negative, because they're both negative. But what's negative one minus one? Very good. Negative two minus two. Enough. You guys do the next one. Simplify that. Anybody got it? You got it, Kayla? What'd you get? Oh, Kayla. I thought maybe not a calculator. Yeah, Kirsten? Nice. That's better. So let's see how she got that. First parenthesis stays the same. Second parentheses, every child, every sign changes, so one becomes negative one. Maybe that's the mistake you made, Kayla, because you changed that one to a negative one. And then plus seven x squared, the seven x squared becomes positive. When I put this in standard form, I start with the squares, and both of you correctly said that we have 13 x squares. It's say y siete o trece. But then negative 5 minus 1 is not negative 4, it's negative 6. When they're both negative, you add them and keep the sign. Emiliano, I don't mind if you sit back there, but just take, take the hood off, man, if you don't mind. Please. Thanks, man. No questions there? All right, see if you can do that one. Raise your hand when you got it. You got it already, Ariana? Thank you. 
Sebastian, you got it? What'd you get? Okay, you, you didn't write it in standard form, but that's, yeah, that's fair. Let's see. He just wrote it backwards. But first parenthesis stays the same. Second parenthesis changes sign. So 3x becomes negative 3x, negative x to the fourth. What's the biggest exponent? So unlike the b's that we saw earlier, okay, if when they do the x to the fourth, this one is positive and this one is negative. So what's one minus one? Zero. They're gone. No mas. But then the x to the thirds, six minus eight is negative two x to the third. That's why Sebastian go in standard form. Go from biggest exponent to least. And then you can use your fingers for the last one. What's 7 minus 3? Positive 4. No questions? Last one. Raise your hand when you got it. Got it, Raphael? What'd you get? Uh, no, close, bro. Be careful. Take a look at your signs. Ariana, you got it? What'd you get? Negative two thirds. Ah, I like that better, yeah. Well played. So first parentheses stays the same. Second parentheses, all the signs change. So 4a squared becomes negative 4a squared. 3 becomes negative 3. 4a becomes negative 4a. If you then combine the like terms, los términos igual. You start off with the a squares. 2 minus 4 is not 2. It's negative 2 a squared. 3a minus 4a. Some of you might say it's negative 1a, and it's not that it isn't. It, it is negative 1a, but when you have a 1 followed by a variable, you don't need the 1, so we would just write negative a. <coughs> and then Mikhail, what I think got you, remember you saw this already today. Yeah, we have threes that are left, but they don't cancel because they're both negative. So if they're both negative, when you go to combine them, you keep the negative, and then what's 3 plus 3? So, all right, um, and I'm going to leave this on the recording, but for the rest of class, what I had planned for today 
because tomorrow you were supposed to take the pretest. Um, I wanted to be able to sign you up for an account so that you could do your homework assignment and get a head start. Now tomorrow we still will have a computer card. We should. And but instead of doing the pretest, we're just going to be working on this tomorrow. But anyways, if you want to get a head start already, just to, you know one less thing to worry about. Um, I could not get a computer card today because they're using them for testing. So this would be one of the few, or maybe the only time. Um, if you have a phone, you can go ahead and use it for this. If not, um, I have one computer that so, that you can use here, and I also have a tablet. If anybody wants it, you'll take the computer. Good. Anybody want the tablet? Oh, you're gonna get your phone. Nobody wants to use a computer or a tablet. Thurston, I right, just see the computer's probably better. Does anybody want the tablet? All right. So we're gonna. If you go to my eClass page, everybody, like, go ahead and just sign into a uh, to your Gwinnett account. This is my Gwinnett account. This is for employees. Yours doesn't look exactly the same, but it's similar. Assuming I can find enough content, your assignments this, this semester are going to come from two sites, Khan Academy and Delta Math. Since your first assignment is on Khan Academy, that's the first one we're going to work on. If you were with me last term, you shouldn't need to do this part because I was able to still have your... Uh, yeah, you did it the first time around. I'll, I'll show you now who I have and who I don't. Here, watch. Look, I can even show you now. These are the people that I already have in here. If you don't see your name, it's because I don't have you yet. Yep, you would be son of Jair Juarez. Um, okay, so... For everybody else, once you go to the Gwinnett site, if you're looking at a full page, like a full web page, it depends on your device. Some, some devices generate a mobile page. But if you're looking at the full page, somewhere in the middle, it's going to say G Suite for Education. If not, you might have to click a tab that says Edition. That means for not. Okay, now once you click G Suite for Education, it's going to open up a Google Drive. The, the key is you want to leave that window open. If it's the first time you've ever done it, it might ask you like for a service agreement. Okay, so once you've opened up your G Suite, then you want to go to my page, the Mr. Romero's page, the one I've been showing off to you, and go to click on Khan Academy login. When you open that, it should, like, I can't show you that here because I'm already logged in, but it, you're going to click on Continue with Google. Just in case you've ever wondered, what do you think the G and G Suite stands for? So you're going to tell Khan Academy that you want to continue with Google. Okay. 
So everything that you've done so far, click on G Suite, Khan Academy, like the stuff that's written on the board, continue with Google. Every time that you go on Khan Academy, you're going to have to do that every single time. The stuff that I'm about to show you, you only have to do once. Click on Khan Academy login. Okay, I'm not asking for your grade and your age. Go ahead and put that in. So when you get to Khan Academy. Um, you see this code here for six period, RC2SKP. It's, it's written in there if you need it. Go to, uh, once you're in Khan Academy, there's two things I need you to do, but there's only one time. Up here on the right, find your name, click profile. If you're on your phone, it's better if you use your phone sideways. It looks more like a regular web page. Click on profile. And edit your profile so that your where it says real name, it's last name, comma, first name. I only have my first initial, but for you guys, put your last name, comma, your first name. Dog with the D O double G. Mm -hmm. And then um, that code, that coach code, you would go here where it says coaches. 
and and you would put in the coach code there RC two SKP RC two SKP. So that when I go now to my roster, let's see, there are 19 people right now registered for this course. And of those, uh, six people are apps. Oh, actually, you know, I marked absent by mistake. I guess he was in the party. Sorry, five people are absent. And but of those five, I know two of them for sure are already in my class, or they should be. He's there. He's there. Yeah. So, so two of them don't count. So minus three. So that should be up to sixteen. Right now, I have ten people. That number should get up to sixteen. Yeah. R C S K P. So I'm missing six people. Thank 
Show me sixteen people. I'll see you very good. Hey, are we able to get her in or no? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't see her. Yeah. Okay, we'll figure it out tomorrow. Then the only other thing I need you to do, okay, is then go, uh, and you don't have to do any special thing with G Suite or anything, but this is going to be for the second week. I know for sure we have an assignment from here. Uh, Go back to my page and click on Delta Math. This is for everybody, even if you were in my class last term, because you don't have this account. And, and when you click on Delta Math, go to Create Account and click on Student. Most of the stuff it's going to ask you for is like stuff for you to you know, what email do you want to use, what your password, you pick all that stuff. The only thing is when you click Student, it's going to ask you for a teacher code. That's the first thing it asks you for. So you have to get my teacher code. And then also, please also make sure that you're signing up for the correct period. Um, if not, you're not going to see the correct assignments. The, my teacher code is 534264 on Delta Math. 